Let's talk about zero padding. Now, zero padding refers to adding zeros to the end of a sequence, x of n, so that the DFT more finely samples the DTFT. As an example, in MATLAB, if we have a vector x that we've already defined, so vector x is already defined, our x padded might be just equal to x with a bunch of zeros at the end. And then our next step might be to say that our DFT of that is calculated in this way. And this DFT will more finely sample the underlying DTFT associated with this signal than the, F than the DFT of the unpadded signal. It's important we always zero pad at the end, never in the beginning. If we put it at the beginning, we're going to delay our signal. Now, the magnitude of a delayed signal isn't changed. Let me just make that clear. If we were to zero pad at the beginning, then our new signal, I'll call it XP, that we might form like this, then our new signal is going to be delayed. It's going to be delayed by however many zeros are here. And we know already the relationship between our x, p, and x. If our signal x of n had a DTFT, that was this, then our new x, p of n, which is the same thing as our x of n minus 100, would have the exact same DTFT as the undelayed signal multiplied by e to the minus j 100 omega. So that comes right from the table of properties of the DTFT. Now, what does that mean for the magnitudes? How does the magnitude change if you, if you zero pad it in the wrong place, delaying it? Well, the magnitude of this is equal to the magnitude of the parts. and the magnitude of this, this is just a signal written in complex exponential notation that we could write like this. Remember, if the real part and the imaginary part of our complex plane looks like this, our e to the j theta is just a point on that unit circle with up to positive one or negative one real parts in between positive j and negative j of imaginary parts, it will have an angle of theta. So that means that the magnitude of this will always be one. So the magnitude of this whole thing is just x is the mag same as the magnitude of our original signal multiplied by one. So the magnitude isn't changed, but the angle certainly will be. If we wanted to find the angle of our delayed signal, that would be equal to our original angle of the undelayed signal plus the angle of this. And the angle of this, as you can see from here, is going to be 100 times omega. And this should kind of make sense that we're seeing a delay in time. So that would correspond to a delay in angle. If you're thinking about a sinusoid, you delay it in time. That's just adding a phase to it. The magnitude of the frequency energy if it's a low frequency before it was delayed, after being delayed, it's still a low frequency. If it's a low frequency signal today, it'll be a low frequency signal tomorrow. If it was a high frequency signal today, it'll be a high frequency signal tomorrow. So if you did delay it in the wrong part, if you did zero pad it in the wrong part, it still wouldn't change the magnitude, but it would change the phase and don't do it. 
this is such a common thing to need to do to zero pad your signal that there's a, a special MATLAB syntax for it. And that special MATLAB syntax looks like this. FFT X capital N. This is not the same as putting N zeros at the end. What this means is that the, it's going to put enough zeros at the end so that the whole sequence of X and those zeros, that's an and sign, and those zeros are now of length N. And if N is too small to even hold X, then it simply won't pad it at all. It'll just simply return. It'll just simply do the regular FFT of X. So the reason why it has this particular, the reason why you might want a zero pad, there's actually two reasons for it. The first is to more finely sample the DTFT. But another reason is that the FFT, although crazy fast as it is, this algorithm to compute the DFT is even faster when N is a power of two. In fact, if the length of your signal that you wanna take a DFT of using the FFT algorithm is a prime number, it will take a long time. In fact, it'll even take up to order n squared length. But if you can make it longer, if you can make it, if n was equal to say two to the uh, 24th minus one, it'll take a lot longer to find that DFT than it would if your n was actually one longer to make it n to the 24th. And let me give an example of that. Let's give an example of this in MATLAB. If we were to create a short signal, let's let X equal one, two, three, four. Now, if we take its DFT, you can expect to get four values out. And we do one, two, three, four. And they're complex like we'd expect. But if we were to say, do an FFT of X and zero pad it to say seven, now we get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven out. And it's the exact same thing as if we had, as if we took the FFT of X and we just added those extra zero padded by three. These are the exact same values. Now, let me demonstrate why finding DFTs of signals that are length two to the N are so important. Let's create our first signal. And I'll make it two raised to the, say, 19th power long. And I'll create another signal. I'm going to make that even shorter. In fact, it's one less in length. So the length of the first signal is about roughly half a million, and the length of the second signal is one less than that. And what I claim is that if we measure the length of time it takes for the, say the second signal, is able to compute the FFT of the second signal in just 0.13 seconds. That's pretty remarkable for a half million length sequ sequence. But look at what it takes to find the length of the first sequence, 10 times faster. So that's why it's important to always try to pad out your values of your, your input vectors to a, to a power of two.